Jin Singh, his whole name. And this was at the California State Railroad Museum in their um, supposed you know, validation and honoring of the history of yesterday being the 150th you know, anniversary of the completion of the Transcontinental Railroad. So therefore, uh, if you're asking me what it will be, it's, it's all of that. It's the, the entrenched um, racism, institutional racism of the local politicians. Um, within the Chinese Americans, as people here know or may not know, there's a lot of factions within the community. Um, there's a lot of people who are very conservative, who don't are aware of the entire history of Chinese Americans or Asian Americans since the 15th century, so you'll have to watch for that too. Who's going to give them money? Just because the people are giving them money, does that mean that they get to be telling the story? That has, you have to be really careful of that. You would have to. I don't live there anymore here in Hawaii, but we are very interested and would love to go on another tour that you leave. But um, basically, it's the, the town that, in Laka, what it was was the town, people, person, folks in the Sacramento County community that they thought it was outsiders. So the racism and the suspicion of what is perceived and who is perceived as outsiders. <coughs> Since we're uh, talking about uh, uh, anecdotal uh, evidence, my, my spouse is a storyteller, and she kind of talks uh, to community groups you know, as a presenter, as a storyteller, as an entertainer. And uh, you know, she's often gone into rural America to talk about Chinese heritage things. She is not Chinese, but she talks about these things and it makes a connection with community members who have little or no understanding or appreciation of their, their backyard. So I would you know, think that maybe in places like Truckee, you know, is there a need to, to uh, explore and highlight the contributions of Asian pioneers there, you know, and to get that, that civic pride in the community for what has happened in the past. I think that's, you know, maybe just one aspect. Another is, you know, through the, uh, the bus tour, the 55 people, you know, that does bring in uh, dollars into the local community. And for the merchants, you know, for the folks in the hospitality industry, they can see that direct benefit of tourism. And, and the heritage tourism specifically to what it can bring to their town. And, and you know, it's not going to happen overnight, but if we continue to provide that sort of exposure, a symposium in Truckee, you know, where folks can actually understand and learn about what's in their backyard, I think there's a huge opportunity there. There, there is a, a bit of resurgence in a little bit of Chinese history that is in Truckee. Um, there is one building just on Bridge Street where the where the only road that crosses the tracks is uh, just south of that. That's a, a, an old Chinese herb shop that has been refurbished to represent at least partially what it was. It's a modern business, but they, they pay homage to that. There's also a historic monument um, at the Safeway regarding what I think, I'm going to get the numbers wrong, but the 608, the 60, 602 community, the vigilantes who, who burned down Chinatown several times. Um, and the Truckee Donner Historical Society is trying to not focus on that above all others, but to bring those stories to light. So I think there are some fertile partners for that. And, and certainly with the connection of Truckee to the Bay Area, with the huge Asian population of the Bay Area, and and as someone who used to live on the Interstate 80, everybody in the whole Bay Area going to Truckee every damn weekend. Um, there, there, is a, there is a cultural connection there because so many of the, of the vacationers come through there are from the Bay Area, which of course has such a heavily Asian population. I think there's a lot of, an awful lot of opportunities there and an awful lot of potential. Money. 